Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brick Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make offset holes uh, with the new Mark II Path Guide system. Now, just to remind you, if you haven't seen the Path Guide system Mark II videos, the new path sticks come with some offset holes and they've got a little label above them. It says either 32 or 48. And there's a pair there, a pair roughly in the middle, and a pair at the other end. Now in order to make this easier to explain, I've already created the pattern of three millimeter holes on this uh, brand new MFT three top that I'm making uh, and they're at the normal 96 millimeter centers. And just to uh, make it even easier to see, I've drawn some green lines uh, both horizontally rows and vertically columns uh, which then at the intersections where the three millimeter holes are. Now Here's the new path stick and I could place that on there and you probably uh, can see almost straight away uh, that if I line that up just like so uh, that uh, naught, one, two, three, four, uh, up to ten uh, are the holes in the path stick. And then we've got these additional ones at 32, 48, 32, 48 and at the very end there 32 and 48. If I now move this path stick sideways, so the hole that says 48 is now over a hole I've already drilled. So there's the 48, there's the hole I've just drilled, and I'm going to put that pin in like so. So that's in the one marked 48, and the, the other two marked 48 also are over holes we've already drilled. So I could put a pin in either here or there, uh, and that would then hold the path stick absolutely in place. So I'm going to put it at the end here. Notice my technique with the new pins, which have got the shoulder on it. Um, I locate the shoulder in the path stick into the hole and push down. And that path stick now is absolutely firmly attached to the bench top. Now, if I now place the second path stick here so that you can see what's going on. The 48 is lined up with that green line there and it's lined up with the one that's already here. Now if you now look at the original holes that have got naught, one, two, three, and these are the holes that we used to drill the original pattern of three millimeter holes, you've got one which is here, one here, one here, and so on. And these are going to be exactly 48 millimeters from uh, the one here. In other words, if, as that's 96, that is exactly in the center. So if you want to do offset holes, uh, which are 48 millimeters from an existing set of holes, you just move the path stick over so you've got a pin through a 48, pin through a 48 up there, and then the holes which go 0, 1, 2, up to 10, are where you can drill uh, further holes at that 48 spacing. So all of the red ticks that I've put on here now indicate where a 48 millimeter hole would be drilled and that's dead center uh, of the 96 spacings that we've got already. Now let's look at uh, the 32. Now I've taken the pins out, I move this along now so that I've got a 32 here above there, put my pin in and I can go up to the other end, there's the other 32, so I can get that in there like so. And now we've got the 32 spacing. So if you look at holes 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on, and I'll line this one up in the same way. This time I'm going to move it just to here. So I've got my 32 there, this is now just the same as before. And if I drilled holes through naught, uh, one, and I'm using a blue marker this time, you can see now that I'm able to create a pattern of holes which are 32 millimeters away from the adjacent hole here. So that's using the naught to 10. So if I now change the position of my path stick, and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to put my 32 pin in there 
and my other 32 is there. And so I now rotate this sample ruler. So I now rotate the other path stick and get that lined up in a similar fashion. There's 32 on that line. So if I now mark the naught to 10, I start with naught here. So naught is there, then one, two, and 10. So had I used the drilling system and drilled at holes naught, one, two, three, four, etc., cetera, uh, I would have then had these uh, additional holes, which I've just uh, marked on here. Now you can see now, having created your initial set of holes at 96 spacing, you can then, using the offset holes, move the path stick to the left or to the right to create some additional holes in order to uh, make whatever uh, idea of a top uh, that you want. In addition to making tops, of course, you can use these 32 uh, millimeter offsets to create a pattern of holes um, for shelving if you want them at 32 millimeter intervals or at 48, whatever it might be. Now you may wonder why I want to put some offset holes on my MFT3 top. Let me just show you why. Here's an ordinary MFT3 top, which I've just placed on top here for the time being. And I've just loosely placed these two uh, UJK Path Super Dogs in place. They're not fully home, uh, but they're just there. Now, if I then bring a guy rail up against here, when I do my saw cut, uh, then uh, I'm going to create a kerf line, and you can see it just there, which goes through uh, these holes. Now, you might not be worried about that, but if for whatever reason you want to use these holes for uh, accurate bench work, it may be that uh, by cutting through them like this, it's degrading them a little bit. So wouldn't it be nice if we were cutting through either just to the left or just to the right of that pattern of holes? Now, there is another issue. If I just put in some ordinary path dogs, the tall ones here and the shorter ones there and there, and bring my stock up against this and my... Uh, guide rail up against there. Now in certain circumstances, and it depends on the thickness of your stock and whether you've got uh, the, the smaller dogs in this line or the next line below, whatever it might be, um, and it also depends on which saw you're using, that at the end of your cut that it's possible for the saw housing to interfere uh, with this uh, final dog. And it can only happen by a mere quarter of an inch. Uh, and by that, I mean that if your stock was a quarter of an inch that way, it shouldn't happen at all. But in some circumstances, it can happen. It wouldn't happen in this particular setting, but it can. So, uh, in order to avoid that, if you have this dog here, but you have a row of small dogs here, so that now what you have is uh, this sort of situation, and what then happens is your saw cut is finished by the time you get to here, and then your housing is nowhere near this dog. So by offsetting the tall dog this way by a little bit, you avoid any risk of the saw uh, housing touching the dog. So there's two offsets that we can do, uh, one to move the kerf line away from those holes and the other to move the tall dog this way so it doesn't interfere with the saw. And it, actually, if you move this dog that way a little bit, it does then increase your cutting capacity this way. So I'm going to now show you how I move this dog this way, that one that way, and over a bit. Right, we're back to uh, my uh, brand new top which I'm making and I've shown the grid of 96 millimeter centered holes in green and those holes have already been drilled and so follow a green line and you will find a hole at an intersection to green lines. So that was the first bit of work uh, which was done in the uh, main video about the Mark II path guide system. Now because we've got the ability to use these 32 and 48 millimeter spacings uh, it's no problem whatsoever to create a dog hole here, which is 32 millimeters in that direction and 48 millimeters in this direction. So it's offset to the middle and then down by 32 millimeters. Similarly, at the top here, we can put a dog hole which is 
48 millimeters that way and 48 that way. So we end up with a dog hole there. And that means then when my guide rail goes across here, uh, the kerf line will not interfere with any of the 20 millimeter holes that we have on the table. It also means that there's no chance whatsoever of a track saw hitting uh, the tall dog here, even though it's a very rare event on an ordinary bench, but uh, even so, it eliminates the problem entirely. Now, there are so many different ways of doing this that if I show you one way, 10 people will each be able to show you a different way. Uh, but I'm going to sh show you a possibility. First of all, we want to uh, achieve a new line, this blue line, along which uh, we can uh, put some holes. And this line is 32 millimeters in that direction. So if you take your path stick and uh, you look for the uh, 32 uh, millimeter holes, which are marked here, and if you were to place uh, a pin through the 32 millimeter hole and then into one of the green intersections, one of the original holes that we drilled, and you go down here and look for another 32 millimeter hole, and there's one there, which is again part of the original layered hole. So we've got 32, and that goes in like so. So we've now got this path stick firmly held in place and uh, we've got the pins through 32 and 32. Now, if we look at the original numbered holes, uh, they start at naught and go three, four, five, up to 10. Uh, we want to put uh, a numbered hole uh, in this line here. And there we have the number four. So we can use our gadget by placing it there and drilling a three millimeter hole there. Now, I've already done this. That three millimeter hole exists and it's just there. And I do exactly the same at the other end. So at this far end, I put the, uh, the path stick in place, uh, pin through there, pin through there, or we're on our green lines. And then at the 32 millimeter point, I can then put this through and drill that hole. And I've actually done it already. That now means I can remove the path stick and move it into this area now. And what I'm trying to do now, now I know that I can put a path stick between these two points, I want to be able to find the center here. And so I want an offset of 48. So if I look for the 48 hole here and put that over that hole, and then the other end here, there's another 48. I put that into this hole. So we've now got our path stick laid out uh, so that we've got our 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 holes halfway in between. In other words, they're offset by 48 millimeters. Now, in order to use this block to create a hole, uh, we obviously need to have the drill in it, but we need to have a hole here and either here or here uh, so that the whole block can be held in place uh, with the pins so that one can drill in that location. So what we actually need to do is to drill three holes. One is the pilot for this uh, cutter, and that cutter has to have a three millimeter hole going all the way through the material in order for it to work properly. So we need to have a hole here, but we also need to have a hole here and here. And I've actually already drilled those three holes already. And if I remove this path stick now, you can see that those holes are there, there and there. So now I can, can position the 20 millimeter guide block. So I've got the tip of the drill there and I can then insert one pin there and another pin there and see how easily they go in it all fits because it's so perfectly well made and now that means i can now drill that hole there and it's going to be absolutely where i want it to be and at this top end we're going to follow a similar process i'm going to put a pin through the 48 there and a pin through the 48 there which will then allow me to drill just here 
for that anchor point which I've already drilled. Same at this end and then drill here and that gives me that anchor point. I can then, I want to be over by 48, so I use the 48 at this end and the 48 at that end uh, and when that's fixed in place I can then drill the three holes I need. One here, one here and one here. So one, two and three. And I've done those already, just as before. And you watch how easy it is to get these pins in. There's one. And there's the other. So that block is held absolutely spot on. So I know that this hole is going to be in the perfect position. Now one word of warning, this has nothing to do with the system, but uh, when you're drilling through, particularly like me now, you're very close to the edge of your top, be careful that you're not about to drill into the aluminium support underneath. Well, that's the process of how to go about drilling uh, offset holes uh, in your bench top, but of course you can also drill offset holes uh, in another way. Um, perhaps for shelving and what I did was to, to make this I made a, a, a lo long piece I used a, a path stick laid out on either side uh, I then drilled through at the 96 millimeter centers moved it along did the 32 millimeter centers moved it around did the other 32 millimeter centers so I ended up then with uh, these uh, holes just where I wanted them I then enlarged uh, the holes uh, to five millimeters to take the standard shelf support and I've got my 20 millimeter guide block in place uh, my hose is attached now you can put this dust port on either side and if you're cutting close to an edge it needs to be on the inner edge otherwise uh, there's a tiny gap under here about this point if it was over here um, uh, and it would lose some of its suction so uh, when you're close to an edge make sure the hose is on the inside. So there we go, start the vacuum and remember to use this sort of pecking motion going up and down to you all the way through. And I'll just position this in the new spot and you can see how easily this, these pins go in that means that's absolutely where it should be. Now we're close to this edge now if you want to remove this uh, it's very easy just pull back on these lugs and it comes off very easily and fitting it on the other side it's very easy I start on one side like that and I pull it over a little bit and there it is it's in situ and there we have another super clean hole so there I have my two offset holes uh, for my new MFT top many thanks for watching take care bye bye <music>